Welcome to Living Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, hello again. I'm Pastor Kathleen Casper, and this is Living Word. Living Word is a teaching program, and it is a program which seeks to bring understanding to God's Word, the Bible, and as we gain understanding into God's Word, we are drawn closer to our God. We get to know Him better. We also get to know ourselves better. And uh, let's begin now with a word of prayer. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. It is indeed a glorious day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Heavenly Father, throughout this time we are studying the uh, book of Daniel. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us understand this book and that we would take away from it those things, uh, those truths that we can implement into our lives. So we pray that your Holy Spirit would, in fact, uh, quicken in us those things that will be helpful to us. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we begin where we left off last time, I would like to ask you, my listeners, for your help. As you know, Living Word is a listener-supported program, and until now, the funds I have needed, which are $1,000 a month, have come in. For this, I thank everyone who has given. At this time, I am in need of help to remain on the air. I certainly would like to remain on the air, but I won't be able to without additional funding. I know that no one has a lot of money these days. My mother's saying has always been, little money makes big money, and I believe it. If you have been touched in any way by this program and would like it to remain on the air and could help fund it in any way, I sure would appreciate it. There are two ways to give. You could send a check to my post office box, which is P.O. Box 3810, Alice, Texas, 78333-3810, or you can give online through my website. The website address is www.livingwordradio.org. I will keep making this message announcement for the next two weeks. If this program remains on the air after that, it'll be because you all will have made it possible. And I thank you in advance for your help. Well, last time we met, we read a letter Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, wrote after he had recovered from severe mental incapacitation. The incapacitation came because... In his pride, he credited himself with how he became a, as mighty and as powerful as he did. Though he knew that it was Israel's God who had raised him up for that particular time in history, he had not acknowledged that this was the case. In a dream, he saw a tree in the middle of the land. Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong, and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under it, the beasts of the field found shelter, and the birds of the air lived in its branches. From it, every creature was fed. In the visions I saw while lying in my bed, I looked, and there before me was a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He called in a loud voice, cut down the tree and trim off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches. But let the stump and its roots, bound with iron and bronze, remain in the ground in the grass of the field. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal till seven times pass by for him. The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of men. In the interpretation of the dream, um, first, Daniel was perplexed. 
for a time. It was only after being encouraged by the king did Daniel actually have the courage to interpret the dream for him. The dream applied to Nebuchadnezzar. He had grown strong. His kingdom extended to the distant parts of the earth. But the king had become proud, and so the Lord was going to humble him until he acknowledged that heaven rules. Daniel advised the king to renounce his sins by doing what was right. And he said, and doing what was right and, and uh, renounce the wickedness that he had been carrying out upon the oppressed. Daniel, by giving this advice to the king, he was truly hoping that if he took the advice, he might turn away the judgment which had been uh, handed down to him from heaven. For all we know, the king might have for a while done this. But one year later, we hear him boasting of the great Babylon he, not the Lord, had built by his mighty power and for the glory of his majesty. Immediately the dream, the vision Nebuchadnezzar had had became a reality. And so for seven times, which in the biblical language here, it amounts to seven years, the king was driven away from people and ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. At the end of that time, we read this. I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified Him who lives forever. Nebuchadnezzar's acknowledgement of the Lord continued with these words. His dominion, the Lord's dominion, is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, What have you done? After all was said and done, fulfilling the dream he had had, Nebuchadnezzar, he did not in any way blame God for his troubles. In fact, he said, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Now following the account of Nebuchadnezzar being humbled by the Lord because of his pride, we read the story of how his son, Belshazzar, learned nothing from what he witnessed his father going through. Though Belshazzar knew everything that had taken place in his father's life, he nevertheless was so bold as to take the gold and silver goblets his father had taken from the temple in Jerusalem, drink from them, and praise the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. That was an extremely foolish move on his part. We read this. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. Since none of the king's advisors could interpret the writing, Daniel was brought in to interpret it. Daniel first severely chastised Belshazzar. Daniel reminded Belshazzar of all that his father Nebuchadnezzar had gone through, and though Belshazzar knew this, he had not humbled himself. Rather, by praising the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, Belshazzar had set himself up against the Lord of heaven, the one who held his very life in his hands. The inscription was this, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson. And it meant this, Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then we read this, that very night Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Daniel 6. Now in this particular chapter, Darius is now the ruler over the kingdom which had been ruled by Nebuchadnezzar and by Belshazzar. 
Darius is a Mede. The Medes and the Persians were the first of the kingdoms to be raised up after the Babylonian Empire fell. In Daniel 3, we heard of the resolve of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not to worship the image Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now we will hear of Daniel's resolve not to disobey the Lord. Let's read this account of a decree issued by Darius and how Daniel disobeyed that decree. Verse 1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to send him, set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. I so very much admired Daniel for how he lived his life in the midst of the Babylonians. He was a foreigner. He had been exiled in the first deportation of God's people from Jerusalem, but he did not harbor any resentment against the Babylonians or the kings he served. No, he truly was a model citizen and a servant that served his masters well. These men who had risen up against him could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days except to you, O king, shall be thrown in, into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in a writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had before. In other words, Daniel didn't do anything he hadn't been doing before. He simply stayed faithful to his God and to his routine, his routine of prayer, praying three times a day toward Jerusalem. Verse 11, then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days anyone who prays to any god or man except to you, O king, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered that the decree stands and in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king and said to him, Remember, O king, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, 
servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Though Darius had been tricked into decreeing such a foolish thing, he ultimately had the same response as Nebuchadnezzar had when he experienced the greatness of the Lord. And so reading on, we hear these words. Verse 25, Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reigns of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Now Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before him, trusted in the Lord their God and would not bow down or pray to anyone but the Lord. It did not matter to them if they were to lose their lives because of their faithfulness to the Lord. They were not going to offend their God. I pray we would be as faithful as they were when faced with remaining faithful to the Lord or not. Now, we come to Daniel 7. In this particular chapter of Daniel, Daniel is like the books of Jeremiah and Isaiah. Daniel, like those two prophetic books, is not written in chronological order. The chapter we just finished chronologically actually follows the chapter we are about to hear. Now, there is nothing wrong in our Bibles being out of order. We simply need to keep this in mind as we read them. Verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind as he was lying on his bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Before I go on any further, let me say that Daniel shows us a practice we need to seriously think about doing. He had a dream. In other words, he had night visions. And upon waking up, he wrote down the substance of the dream. This is so very important for us to do. God communicates with people during the night. He certainly does show us how he has done this in the Bible. And since God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we can expect that God may at times communicate with us during the night in our dreams. Our conscious minds are sometimes so terribly cluttered with our daily affairs that God is rarely given the opportunity to get through all of that clutter to communicate anything to us. By coming to us in our dreams, God bypasses our conscious minds and communicates directly with our subconscious mind. The unfortunate side to communicating to us through dreams is this. If we do not write down the dreams we have, we rarely will remember them And if we do not remember them, we cannot benefit from them. Daniel wrote down the substance of the dream, and after he had the dream written down, he could consider it more fully and ponder its possible meaning. Now, some dreams are relatively easy to understand, and others are quite difficult to understand. Whole books have been written about dream interpretation, but we must understand that though these books can be helpful, helpful, there is a limit to how specific the interpretations of symbols and numbers and animals and and things in the dreams can be in these books. Ultimately, it is God who must reveal the meaning of our dreams to us. The good news, of course, is this. God wants to reveal the mysteries of our dreams to us. God is the revealer of mysteries. He doesn't hide things from us to keep them from us. He hides things from us so that we can find them. 
this is what we read from Proverbs 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Let me read that again. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. God wants us to search out the matter. He he delights in our searching out the things that he has concealed for us to find, and he delights when the revelation is revealed to us. Now, learning what God may want to reveal to us begins with our realizing that he may very well be communicating with us in our dreams and in our writing down the substance of our dreams Uh, so that we may ponder them further until all that the Lord is communicating with us has been unfolded is an important exercise for us to do. Let's not discount our dreams. Let's read on, verse 2. Daniel said, In my dream at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a man, and the heart of a man was given to it. And there before him was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, Get up and eat your fill of flesh. After that I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand, time ten thousand, stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all of this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdoms and will possess it forever, yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying with its iron teeth and bronze claws. The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the three, the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, 
This horn was waging war against the saints and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will just subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and try to change the set times and the laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be handed over to the saints, the people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship him and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. This particular chapter in Daniel is very much like the book of, the, of Revelation. You know, and so when we read the book of Revelation, we can go back to Daniel and see how they parallel one another, and they do parallel one another. And so this is just a very important vision that he had. We're going to talk about it just a little bit more tomorrow. But please know that even as these uh, kingdoms are rising and falling, and, and that you know, one kingdom is going to be you know, bringing much grief to the saints of God, God is going to rule in favor of the saints. The saints are going to be the ones who will rule and reign forever and ever. They are going to have the authority. Um, it will be given to them from the Most High God. It isn't going to be the other kingdoms of the earth that are going to get the authority from the Lord, but it is going to be the saints of God. It's going to be us, believers in Christ Jesus. And so even though there's a lot of turmoil going on here in this particular chapter and also in the book of Revelation, we know already now that it is the saints of God who will come out victorious. And so let me just bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Bye-bye, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining Pastor Kathleen. Through this message, we hope that you will have come to know God better. God can be known and wants to be known by each person on earth. God is a communicator. He has given us the Bible, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit as means through which He reveals Himself and His will to us. God is love. And regardless of what is going on in your life, God loves you and is concerned for you. He is as near as a prayer, and he can be trusted to be faithful to you. Living Word is a listener-supported program. Your prayers and donations are needed to keep this program on the air. Donations can be through the Living Word website or sent to Living Word, P.O. Box 3810, Alice, Texas, 78333-3810. If you have a question you'd like to ask Pastor Kathleen, a comment you'd like to share or would like to purchase a CD of this message and have access to the Internet, Pastor Kathleen's website is www.livingwordradio.org. If you are in the area and would like to join Pastor Kathleen and the congregation she serves on the weekend, she is pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Alice, Texas.